All right, welcome back here for the round two. That's close, but I don't think it's really keepable. We've got three cards in it, we can't cast at all. We still need two lands before we can get Spirit Flare. It's like Will Mulligan. Spirit Flare just isn't as good as some of the other flashback cards. I won't mulligan this, we've got Careful Study, and we've got all our colors. And we have a four drop that's not too bad. Um, I think I'll probably... I'm trying to decide if I want to start with Abandoned Outpost or not. Hmm. So, opponent has an island. Do, do, do. Go careful study now. We don't have a ton of two drops. I'm just quickly consult the deck list. Checking the deck list is a good thing to do. To make sure you're doing the right thing. Just gonna see what kind of two drops we have available. Then mana cost. Not a ton. I'll actually start with Bounded Outpost here. Just give us more information on what we can keep in our hand and what we can discard. That card is so sweet. I just want to see my deck all the time in this format. <laughs> Seems really counterintuitive, but the card is actually really good. So now I've drawn a mountain. Easy. Discard a mountain and a plains. Dreamwinders are going to be really good in this matchup. Oh, sweet. Thank you, opponent. It's pretty much exactly what we wanted to happen. Uh, but them having a two drop less so. I think I'll play a mountain. Because I already know we're playing red and having all the colours on the table means I have to play around slightly more tricks. Except now they know I had, so never mind. Definitely not going to just cycle Guided Strike here. It's really good when you have a creature out, really good with Spirit Flare, really good with Repel. Guided Strike just complements the rest of the cards pretty well, so I'll just keep that. I mean, I could understand an argument for getting rid of it, saying, like, what to keep information hidden. Our opponent is cycling through so much, they're gonna have flashback, they're gonna have threshold in no time. It's insane. So they're playing sort of Grixis colors, I guess? What did they discard? Barbarian Outcast, oh god, that card's bad. So I imagine they're sort of black blue? I don't even know. Probably heavy blue. They've certainly cast enough blue spells already. Um, play on the land here. Let's play Dreamwinder and see what happens. Awesome, it resolves. That's the first step to world domination, is resolving your 4-3. Sorry about all the sound troubles today. I meant to say so at the start, but I broke my average microphone in the move to my new place. I haven't bought a new one yet, so I'm actually using the inbuilt microphone on my laptop. So, understandably, that's not very good sound quality. Oh god, that card's good. Yep, one of the better reasons to be in red. It gets a lot of crazy damage spells. It's not a strong main colour, it's a pretty good support colour. Repel is not good against that card either, because it just means I get to use it again. Ugh. Um, tricky. I could try and Guided Strike here. Probably shouldn't have played my land yet. That was pretty bad. Because if I hadn't played my land, I could try and Guided Strike, and then even if I had um, a Vigilant Sentry, I could play it. But now I can't, and because I have three of those in my deck, that makes it a lot less attractive. I'm actually just going to repel the Aquamoeba and force my opponent to draw it again. I know that just sets them back a little bit. The reason for doing it on my turn as opposed to their turn means that they have less information as to what's going on when they're making their decisions. If I wait until they draw, then they know on their turn what their next card is. Whereas this way, they don't. Oh, that deck is good. So I don't even have the threshold yet. 
pretty bad. Pretty bad. So, can I cast a Vigilant Sentry? I guess I will, because otherwise... Yeah, this deck just doesn't seem that good. Apologize. Apologies to everyone who's watching. <laughs> I really could do better, but I didn't. So it starts off as a 2-2. Yeah, 4 mana 2-2 two, two flying. This is a really good card. Yeah, our opponent. I'm surprised how our opponent lost round one because their deck has so far been nothing but good cards and enabling and barbarian outcast. Yep, more good cards. Maybe they just played against a really good opponent because their deck is sick. Um, just gonna check who in transit. They lost zero two as well, so it's not like they put up much of a fight. Yeah, we're just dead here. We're actually just dead. Wow. Pretty crazy. This card's just insane. Like, oh, let's make it another Shivan Dragon, but make it better. Because Shivan Dragon wasn't good enough already. Okay, so that was game one. Pretty brutal. Game two. Bring Traeros Hayful in again. What can we cut here? Maybe a Spirit Flare. These cards have just been disappointing me more and more. I thought they'd be kind of okay, but mmm. Don't seem to be. Um, I'll try again going down one land. Swelling Sandstorm is probably worth keeping in. Phantom Nomad could be okay. Just another Traeros Hayful. Don't have a lot of good options. Circular Logic definitely going in. It's probably okay like that. Let's try that. Why is Circular Logic not in my main deck? That's insane. <laughs> that was probably just a mistake on my part, so apologies about that as well. I will play first because I can't beat a lot of their cards. Not like the Mulligan. I'd usually prefer to go second in this format, but. My deck's not winning very many games where it goes second. Just got two cards. Um, it's pretty bad. I guess I'll just discard these two and just hope to go all in on Vigilant Sentries because I can cast them. Just hope to hit Mental Note next turn. Go to six cards in my graveyard. Words of Wisdom is close. Get to do the good old words of wisdom on the opponent. On the draw, make them discard one of the cards. That's not too bad. Yeah, I really do apologise about any poor sound quality. I do know it's pretty bad. Just feel I should say that again. Because it is really... You can... I know that the clicking is much more discernible when I use an inbuilt microphone. The clicking of my mouse pad. Once I've got myself set up a bit properly, I'll be using a proper mouse, proper mic, and my sound quality should actually be better than it ever was before, because I'll get a better microphone than I did last time. In the meantime, I'm just going to keep putting up a couple of videos, because um, Dan would like some videos for the channel, and I'm happy to oblige. I do like playing Magic, and... I do like making videos and I like communicating with viewers. So it's a, talking about magic is a very good way to get better at magic. If anyone watching this is trying to up their game, I recommend like just try making some videos of your own. It makes you think a lot more about what the correct play is a lot of the time. And makes you think about why you're making a decision because you kind of have to explain it and when you explain it to other people you explain it to yourself as well why is my opponent playing these they're really bad it's even worse than a black red 2-2 with no abilities and that's already a bad card um, mountain 
play another Vigilant Sentry and hope my opponent has no way to kill our Vigilant Sentries. And just wait until we hit Threshold. Once we hit Threshold, we should be able to win every single combat on the face of the world. On the face of the Earth. On the face of the Universe. On the face of everything. So we'll have 12 12 blockers. Be crazy. Like, Vigilant Sentry is a pretty good card. Just a matter of making it work. Definitely gotta cast this. I do not need this many Vigilant Sentries, especially if I don't have flashback. I'm not gonna play these lands. Just gonna hope I can get to seven lands to start discarding them. There's not a great way to get cards in your graveyard in Odyssey Draft, and it hasn't happened to me very much, but still, I've got Compulsion in my deck. I can discard lands that way. It's just good to have some random lands in your hand. I don't have an Antuco Blight Cutter, unfortunately. Considering for my next draft, just forcing green, <laughs> it's probably wrong. Like, blue and red are two of the stronger colours that get underdrafted most of the time. And as you can see from the opponent's deck, they've got some decent cards. Just, I have no idea why they're playing Barbarian Outcast. Grixis is a pretty decent deck, though. I, I like it. I like almost every deck that doesn't include white. White or green. Because white is bad and green is overdrafted. Stop it. At least I'm only one card away from Threshold. It's not exactly going to do it. Yeah. If I can get, um... What's the two mana one one? It's right here. Trained Pronghorn. I thought that was what it was called, but I was sure I was wrong. One thing I also like about blues, it has um, Cephalid Looter and Cephalid Broker. Cephalid Broker is the same as Cephalid Looter, but it's 4 mana, it's a 2-2. Two -two. And target player draws 2 cards and discards 2 cards. It's great in the control matchups, because you can actually just wait until both players have about 9 cards left in their deck. Then you can hit your opponent with them, and like kill your opponent in 3 turns by forcing them to draw the rest of their deck really quickly. Especially when they don't have a lot of cards left in hand. What have they got? Hopefully not Swelling Sandstorm, because that would be brutal. Kill all of my creatures. So the main reason I have so many creatures on the board right now is because I was hoping to get through for damage. Probably should have actually kept one of my Vigilant Sentries back. Oh, that's not good. Come on, spell. Off the top. There we go. Sorry, sneezing off to the side there again. Sneezy me. So I'm actually going to sacrifice my abandoned outpost here for blue mana. Discard a card. To draw a card. And... Play an island. And then I can attack with Mystic Penitent. And to see how my opponent blocks. <laughs> then pump it once. So Mystic Penitent suddenly goes from being completely irrelevant to being possibly the most relevant creature on the board. Now if they want to attack with a fledging dragon, I have what is essentially an 8-8 blocker. Sitting right here. And it's also a 5-5 attacker. If I need to, I can make an 11-11 attacker. Probably should have popped it twice, actually. That was really bad of me. I could have always killed my opponent on the spot. Yeah, Vigilant Sentry is not a bad card, as you can see. You suddenly get Threshold, and your opponent cries. Oh. Oh, that card's horrible. 
Oh, go away. No. That's really bad. It's really bad. This card is disgustingly good. Like, this is easily a first peak in almost every format. This card's insane. Just kills three things. Oh, how do I beat that? How do I actually beat that? Okay, so... Just need to find something. Nope. Um... So why didn't I block there? I'm not sure. So I think I can 8, 9, 10, 11 damage. It's pretty bad, pretty bad, pretty bad. Well, I guess I did pass. I'm going to have to block something. <laughs> Ugh. Go away. Pretty sure my opponent's just got me dead now. Wow, my deck is bad. <laughs> I didn't think my deck was good, but this is just embarrassing. But, yeah. Pretty bad. Okay, so we've lost round two as well. So I'm going to try and win one more pack. Just to have another draft set. And I don't know. I don't know if I'm even going to bother drafting again. Well, my rating's below 1800. That's pretty... It was like at 1860 through the middle of Mirage drafts. Alright, well thanks for watching.